Let's go. Goss on the go. Your sports talk fix for the week. All the sports talk you need. 30 minutes or less. Everything you need to know from the sports week. We make it nice and condensed for you. And it happens because of our great partners. Thanks to Techies Fire and Water Restoration. Your best way back to normal. We are out live. Levac and Goss is back this Friday. For some of you, look, the first two shows of Levac and Goss have been very different. We had a Sunday morning show at 8 o'clock in the morning. And then we had our show at the Albany Empire offices where I know the sound wasn't great. I know. Third time's the charm. This could be the show that you finally say, all right, enough with you guys on the weekends and the early mornings and the stupid sound. Friday, the hideaway, 5 to 7. Right when you get out of work, make it an early Friday. Hang out with us at the hideaway or watch the show and be a part of the show on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Godzilla Media or... If you're on Facebook, facebook.com slash TE Fire Water. Techies Fire and Water Restoration, your best way back to normal. TE Fire Water.com. Also on Twitter at TE East 518. Flood, water, mold damage at your place, your home, where you're living. Who are you going to call? Not the Ghostbusters. You're going to call Techies Fire and Water Restoration. They're going to help you when damage happens to your home. These are the people that you can trust. Shout out to Mike Corda and his team there. My buddy Levac as well. Techies Fire and Water Restoration. Your best way back to normal, tefirewater.com. And also, our friends over at Mohawk Honda. Selection is king this summer. If you're looking to trade in your vehicle, no matter where you're listening from, if you're listening in Syracuse, to Utica, to Watertown, to the Capital Region, and more, get into Mohawk Honda right there on Freeman's Bridge Road in Glenville. Stop in, say hello. Hopefully my guy Greg's in there. Maybe Cam McKenna, Brian McKenna, the Ellis's, whoever it might be. Maybe Lindsay's in there, the Herndon family, and more. These are people that you can trust when you go through that car buying experience or you're trading in your vehicle. So many spots here across upstate New York don't have that vehicle that you're looking for. Where's the inventory? Where can you get your best trade-in value for your car? It's Mohawk Honda. Drive in, take advantage of these great deals going on and the great selection during this different time in the car industry. You need to lean on people like Mohawk Honda, people that you can trust. I love my pilot this summer vacation, the road trips were taken and more visiting family and friends. I never have to worry about my pilot because it's such a great vehicle. By far and away the best ride I've ever had in my entire life. Had that same type of statement for yourself. Stop at a Mohawk Honda. Get the best ride of your lifetime. Mohawk Honda, where they always go out of their way to please you. Now, on to this week's episode of Goss on the Go. 50 points in a deciding game in the NBA Finals. We haven't seen that in 60 plus years. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak, the two-time MVP, leads the Milwaukee Bucks to their first NBA championship in 50 years. Shout out to my buddy Darren, who is a Bucks fan. We mocked him about 10 plus years ago, saying he was a Bucks fan. He really is. He stayed with his team. So shout out to all the other Bucks fans I know. I don't know any other Bucks fans, but they're champions nonetheless. 50 years it ends. Giannis Antetokounmpo, that is one of these legacy games. And I tweeted this out at Tom Goss, T-O-M-G, it was easy. When you watch those highlights back and those great moments in NBA Finals history, yes, it's not a solidified moment of, remember, the block or the shot or the move. It may not be frozen in time, but we look back on careers and say, that was when Giannis Antetokounmpo went from a really good player, a great player, to an all-time discussion player. You know those conversations you have with your friends of, if you could have a starting five, who would it be? How about your second starting five? Maybe when it's all said and done, 26 years old, when people build their all-time starting fives and they say, who's your best power forward? Why isn't it Giannis Antetokounmpo, right? He can do it all. He can pass. He can shoot. He can dribble. He's big. He's strong. He's athletic. He can dunk. He can block shots. The Greek freak. Having that type of performance has put him in that discussion and on that trajectory of being in that all-time conversation. And that's not reactionary NBA Finals talk. No league has this happen more than the NBA. When the finals wrap up, we talk about greatness and legacies. Go back and look at that series that happened with LeBron James and the Dallas Mavericks so many years ago. It was 11 years ago now. And people, the pundits, the experts didn't have LeBron James at that point as a top five player in the league. It happens all the time post times. I'm not being reactionary. Because the Milwaukee Bucks have positioned themselves as a true contender for years to come in the East because of the Greek freak, Chris Middleton, 
and any other additions. Holiday that they brought in, some argue that they might have given up too much. Doesn't matter now, they're champions. They won. They brought the title home to Milwaukee. The Deer District, which originally when I heard the name sounded incredibly lame, but then you see 60,000 fans standing outside watching on a monitor, just wanting to have fun and being a part of the experience. The fans of Milwaukee deserved it. And that's that phrase right there. How good it is for the NBA when a fan base deserves that championship. Because the NBA was heading towards all these major superstars always signing with major markets. LeBron going to LA. Kawhi Leonard going to LA. The Knicks always in the discussion. However you want to rank Brooklyn and where they rank in markets. It's that New York City demo and that target spot you want for more fans and more endorsements and everything else. I've said this about that market size thing. In 2021, does it really matter that much anymore? Like back in the day, if you played in a big market, you were on television, you were on radio, maybe those marquee games in those big time markets, somebody couldn't find you and actually watch your game. It's 2021. If you're good, they'll find you. The NBA has now given incentive to teams that if you draft a player, you will make more money than any other team if you're offered a max contract to stay with the team that drafted you because of this stuff. Now, some people still said, I don't care about the money. I'm going to the other market. Milwaukee kept the Greek freak. It's not too long ago where people wondered what team he was going to go to. Would it be the Lakers? Would it be the Clip? He stayed in Milwaukee. They built the contender right there. So for markets like Sacramento and Orlando and even Phoenix, who they just played, when you wonder about getting superstars or building rosters, you can draft somebody in the NBA draft and they, homegrown talent, can lead you to a championship. That's what the Greek freak did. He's now in that discussion of all-time great players. Yeah, that's right. Even with one championship. Because of the physical gifts that he has and the time that is still on the way for his career, this is the moment we're going to look back and say, okay, remember back in July of 2021 when he won that championship over Phoenix? Yeah, that was the start of when we had the discussion of he is in that conversation of you start a starting five with basketball players and I get a seven footer who's a two time MVP who can handle the basketball and shoot threes and get to the rim. Oh yeah. And he's got a championship. He's that good. Shout out to Milwaukee, the Greek freak, bringing it home and changing the way we both view him and view smaller market cities in the NBA. Last time we talked about baseball here, we're coming off the home run derby, the all-star game, Yankees, Red Sox getting postponed. We have all these great juicy stories about Major League Baseball and the momentum is in their favor from Otani to Pete Alonso and more and Vlad Jr. winning the all-star game MVP. What a boring week it was this past week in baseball. Some would argue that the Giants and Dodgers was going to be exciting and that was going to be a battle and everything else. At least on the New York side of it, it felt like a really boring week. Because for the New York Mets, Jacob DeGrom is now injured. DeGrom, who is the best pitcher in baseball, who has helped his team get the first place in the NL East, isn't pitching anymore. And if you want to watch the Mets baseball team continue to have success, you need Jacob DeGrom out on the mound. Yes, Pete Alonso stepped up and hit his 19th home run of the season. Marcus Stroman, a New York guy, pitching great for the New York team, especially in his most recent outing. But the excitement from the Mets wasn't there this week. And for the New York Yankees, they sit fourth in the AL East. Chapman had his first save in about a month against Philadelphia. And I'm not talking against just the Phillies. I'm talking about just in baseball in general, he had a save. But what else gets you excited about the Yankees right now? The Seattle Mariners have caught them in the wild card chase. The Toronto Blue Jays are now ahead of the Yankees. And that's the most depressing part about the Yankees. Look, losing games, if you're a Yankee fan, you don't want to ever have that happen anyways. The expectations for Yankee fans are maybe higher than... No, they are. They're higher than any other fan base in sports. But being boring feels just as bad. Because the Yankees nighted and night out for, what, five Maybe in longer than that, 10 years? There always were storylines about the Yankees. You had the emergence of rookies like Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez, Miguel Andujar, Glaber Torres, all these young faces joining the pinstripes. And night in and night out, they were doing something crazy. Clint Frazier, 
running around with this red hair for the last few seasons was always in the news doing something big. Then the talk about free agency and the trade deadline of how that was going to get balanced, how much did CeCe Sabathia have left, Masahiro Tanaka, Sonny Gray coming in, Garrett Cole, what his performances were going to be. So you had all these great storylines about the Yankees, and now those rookies who stole the headlines are veterans. Those free agent pitchers may have been dealt away or retired or, at least Garrett Cole, kind of been more considered human. So the Yankees have become boring, not exciting, not the team you want to listen to night in and night out or watch night in and night out. That's what I'm bummed about for Yankee fans that all throughout the last few summers, and we go even further back through Rivera's final season and Jeter's farewell season, even when the Yankees weren't playoff teams, there was always something to talk about when you got the Yankees. The 2021 Yankees have become the most boring Yankees. Maybe it's just this week. Maybe it's just that interleague matchup that doesn't have that same type of flair like it used to. But hopefully the boring ends Friday when we get Yankees Red Sox. And that's what we need. Come out. We already said it earlier in this podcast. The hideaway from 5 to 7. That rivalry needs to ignite something back into this Yankee team to make them exciting. And less boring like we got out of that Philadelphia season series this past week. And for Met fans, one more time to end it with you guys. You're in first place. You guys are Met fans. You feel like something bad's going to happen. I'll try my best to tell you it's not, but you won't believe me. A strange, odd week for baseball, at least on the East Coast, where I hoped momentum would swing and continue to keep baseball as the top conversation. Which, by the way, you know, I was saying it was a boring week in baseball. Some of you are interested in this story because of the tease I had on social media for it. It is the worst run organization in professional sports. That is the Oakland Athletics. Now, you hear that statement out loud. You're like, guys, my team stinks. I root for whatever team that hasn't won a championship in X amount of years. You might be one of those fans of those teams. I'm not talking so much about wins and losses because the A's have proven that. I'm talking about management, ownership, media relations, fan base, and more. It's the Oakland A's. For those of you who don't follow the Oakland A's, and again, just take these few minutes to enjoy that your organization isn't as bad as this on the professional level, they've done things like played when their toilets were flooded in their stadium. They've had that weird, awkward, half baseball, half football feel that if you watch it on television, you're like, why is it so bad? From a management standpoint, if they would have these deals with television and radio networks locally in the Bay Area, and they were by far and away the hardest team to deal with. If you ever said anything negative about the Ace, they would call up the station. This is documented. Jason Barrett's talked about it. Damon Bruce has talked about it. 95-7, the game and more. You can go through the stories of the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's, at one point, one season, when they left another radio station, they posted as quick as they could on Twitter that they were leaving because they were thought they were hot shit in the Bay Area. They decided to leave, and guess what happened? Nobody picked them up, so they didn't have a radio station or a TV station for that year. They had to figure out ways to put their product out there. They're sensitive when it comes to criticism. They don't have a new stadium. The owners don't want to move. They never want to spend money, and we've seen that documented in movies like Hardball. But they say, oh, it's because we don't have a budget, which is true. Look, some owners are willing to pay through the luxury tax and everything else. But the Yanks, when you talk about management, stadium, overall growth of the franchise, and by the way, the fan base itself, It's a really small fan base in Oakland. It's a small, loud fan base in Oakland. But it's there. Here's what happened. There was this government meeting involving the A's. And I'll sum it up to make it maybe simpler for some people who may not be invested in California politics. Basically, the A's want a new stadium. And let's say you're trying to buy a house. And I don't know, for the sake of this conversation, let's say $100,000. Okay. For us to build the stadium... We need $100,000, Oakland. Here is what we need. And the Oakland council men and women would come back and say, congratulations, Oakland. We will give you $50,000 for your house. And the A's are like, no, we need $100,000. Like, we need $100,000. And Oakland would come back and say, we accept your offer of $50,000 for your stadium. Thank you. What? No, 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 no. We need $100,000. You guys aren't listening to me. This is not going to work. The Oakland A's are done. Unfortunately, like the other Oakland teams, like the Raiders have left Oakland for Las Vegas, like the Golden State Warriors have left Oakland for San Francisco. They're gone. See ya. The A's are either off to Las Vegas or Nashville. 
I feel like it's more likely Nashville because Las Vegas, as great as the city is, is emerging with the Golden Knights and the Raiders. Remember, those are indoors. Vegas is a desert. Do you think you're going to draw fans who are going to sit outside in 115 degree Vegas heat to watch a baseball game for nine innings in comparison to Las Vegas in Nashville? When Nashville has that great scene, what's it become? The Bachelorette Party Capital of the U.S.? And you've got that setting where you can walk to the Titan Stadium and the Predators have become one of the most popular hockey teams because of was Smashville and everything else. Yeah, I like the Nashville Stars grabbing that baseball team. So there you go. Oakland and the councilmen and women, the government and the A's organization continue to be the worst in baseball. And it's even more frustrating when your franchise wins and you get no backing. Oakland, bye-bye. See ya. You're gone. Nashville fans, you're going to get a baseball team and... I feel for the Oakland fans who are passionate about their team because you lose three sports professional teams in that quick of a time. But if you asked Oakland fans, this one likely hurts the least of the three. Is Aaron Rodgers going to be the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers? This has been the talk of the sports world, what, for three months? And by the talk of the sports world, I mean radio hosts or television anchors or news reporters. Air quotes on reporters. You know, the talking heads that need time to fill with Aaron Rodgers for the next three months now that Dak Prescott has a contract. But now's the time to talk about it because what the hell is going to happen? We know going back to the NFL draft, and it seems more and more likely now, you kind of figured this out, that Aaron Rodgers or someone in the quote, Rodgers camp leaked that info to Adam Schefter on draft day because there had been talk after the loss of the Buccaneers in the NFC title game that Rodgers wanted out and he wasn't happy in Green Bay. And it's not just about the 2021 finish to the season. It's actions and drafting a Jordan Love and more that have resulted in what's happened. And even the longer Mike McCarthy reign as a head coach for that team. So is he showing up or not? I guess I got to stop stalling. I don't think he is. Wouldn't something have happened by now? Adam Schefter also reported that Aaron Rodgers was offered a two-year extension, which would have made him the highest-paid NFL extended player in the league. He would have been the richest guy. He would have had the richest contract ever. He would have had anything he wanted into his 40s playing for the Packers. He said no. If that's not the sign of it doesn't matter about money or respect or longevity or anything like that, there is no other sign, Packer fan. Now, business-wise... Andrew Brandt reported this. They don't have to move him. They don't. They can keep him around to the 2022 season where they might have a little bit more flexibility with this contract there. Jordan Love is more prepared to be the quarterback. They're in a different spot pre-draft now and almost not putting their feet to the fire can build with a life and career post Aaron Rodgers. That could happen too, though. And what I mean is Aaron Rodgers says, I'm retiring. I'm not showing up if I have to play for the Green Bay Packers in 2021. And then he unretires in 2022. Remember, Carson Palmer had something similar like this happen for the Bengals and the Raiders years ago. I'm going that way now. I don't think Aaron Rodgers has shown up to training camp. Because then someone who is, has been documented is a little bit sensitive when it comes to criticism. This is not just football, but just life in general. How much criticism would he face? And he would feel like unfair criticism towards him. If he says, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm not coming back, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and finally he says, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm going to play. That's going to be all season long. Even his buddy, his pal, his bro, Pat McAfee, when he was doing his hits weekly on Sirius or wherever the hell McAfee's going to be in the future, as it seems like he changes radio stations constantly. Even Pat McAfee will have to ask Aaron Rodgers, what's the deal? And you know... If Aaron Rodgers plays well and the Packers have a questionable decision and Matt LaFleur, who's put up an all-time great start to an NFL coaching career, will be questioned for his decision, does Rodgers want to deal with that? He's not showing up. If you are a Denver Bronco fan or you're the fan of a team that still needs a quarterback and it's not happy, I'm telling you there's a chance. At this point... I would be surprised if Aaron Rodgers actually shows up to training camp. Wednesday, July 28th, 10 a.m. is when we're going to find out if Rodgers is actually going to be on the field. So it perfectly timed up this time next week. We'll talk about the results of it.
Oh, it feels so good to talk about college football. We've been doing Goss on the Go episodes for, what, about four months now? And I feel as if not counting the name, image, likeness stuff, this is the first real good college football story I can sink my teeth into a little bit. And that involves the rumors, the reports, Bleacher Report, the first to have this, that Texas and Oklahoma were considering going to the SEC. Why? Seriously, like why? Money's probably the most likely answer, but Oklahoma and Texas are two of the top 10 most profitable athletic programs in the country. Remember the Longhorn Network that ESPN used to have? Go through the numbers yearly, what Texas and Oklahoma do. Now someone can say, oh, guys, they're 12th or 8th or 6th. Every year it changes. But you want to talk about national brands, both football and basketball contenders, which are the two biggest money-generating sports in NCAA. It's Texas and Oklahoma. Texas hasn't been good in the Big 12, right? We all know this. They've had Colt McCoy and Vince Young as their star quarterbacks over the last 16 years. But Texas has fired people like Mac Brown and Charlie Strong and Tom Herman. Steve Sarkeesian's run the program. Now, how about Texas gets good? How about we stop doing the is Texas back stuff on the internet? Actually, no, no, no. I love those. I want is Texas back forever. Please never stop is Texas back. Anytime you tweet me is Texas back at some goss T-O-M-G-O-C-C. I will think it's funny. How about the quote? Did you see the quote from Oklahoma on this? Oklahoma put out the quote involving this SEC rumor. Quote, the college athletics landscape is shifting constantly. We don't address every anonymous rumor. Well, you just did. If it's an anonymous rumor, then you're not going to address it. Imagine somebody, Clay Travis had this great example in Fox Sports and Outkick the Covers. Great example. He said, Imagine dropping this line if you were married and someone reported you were considering a divorce and you said the landscape is shifting constantly and we don't address every anonymous rumor. What a terrible statement. Now, do I think Oklahoma and Texas will actually go to the SEC? No, I don't because there's too much TV contracts out until 2025. Again, outkick the coverage did a great job covering this where there's a lot of tier system, not to bore you. TV stuff's going to play a factor in Oklahoma and Texas. They may have decided just to dip their toe in the water and see what it was all about. There's also rumors about Texas A&M may having a clause in their contract that they were going to be the only Texas state team to be in the SEC. Win first. Did I miss the Oklahoma championship under Lincoln Riley? Did I miss Texas being this powerhouse program in the Big 12? Last time I checked, schools like Baylor and TCU and Oklahoma State were playing far better than Texas was. Conference realignment talk is back. And now with the NIL, maybe what's happened, it's bad budgeting from Oklahoma and Texas. Hey, our star players are getting money and our donors are no longer giving the money directly to us. They're giving directly the money to the students' pockets. Did you never see this coming? Did you think the gravy trade was going to ride on forever? That's what gets me mad about a lot of these athletic programs at the Division I level. You always thought that you, sitting in your office, punching a time card, showing up and doing something that really doesn't have an impact on the game should have been paid consistently while the athletes on the field were capped with their salary or scholarship. You should have always known this day was coming, especially places like Texas and Oklahoma. And now you're finding ways, even though you're a profitable organization, to get more profitable. That's business 101. But this is greed at its core. We're making a ton of money, but we could be making more money. Let's jump ship. Who cares if our record's 8-4? and four? Maybe one day we'll be 13-0. and 0. College football's almost back. Stay in the Big 12, Oklahoma and Texas, till you can win something. Spencer Rattler, best quarterback in the country. Texas, you going to win 10 games this season? College football a month away. Cannot wait for some of the college football coverage we're going to have here on Godzilla Media. I'm going to be back right in my top 25 poll this year. We might do a special top 25 edition audio every week with it. College football, man, I love it. So happy we finally get to talk about it here on the podcast. I'm never going to be good at being the person who offers relationship advice to somebody else. Even in the future, like with my kids, I'm not going to be good at offering relationship advice because 
I didn't have a lot of breakups. I didn't go through tough times or have to find... I've been dating the same girl since I was 16. But please, as someone who does sports for a living, here is the best relationship advice I can ever offer to you listening right now. Especially the guys, the ladies, you probably already know this and hopefully your guy is with you on this. The best relationship advice can offer in sports is this. Watch the Olympics with your girl. Watch them. There is no other sporting event that is watched more by women than the Olympics. And it is not even close. Now think about that statement out loud. Guys, I don't know if it's the Olympics. Okay, what do you think would be? What do you think is the most watched sporting event by mass, by percentage for women? Like you could say a women's league like soccer or the WNBA, but on a national scale, do they get anywhere close to the coverage that the Olympic Games get every four years? No. It's about storylines. It's about drama. It's about the underdog. These storylines come through. Both men and women can relate to this. So whether it's swimming, soccer, basketball, what any other sport she wants to watch, get invested and find some athletes that you want to root for. Now, with that being said, guys, I know how it goes. You got your basketball and baseball players you're pretty familiar with. But after that, that might not be why you're such as invested in the Olympic sports as maybe your fiance or wife or your girlfriend. So you got to get somebody to, you know, maybe act like you're an expert on for some of you. Here's the name, Caleb Tressel. Every year there's a name that comes out of nowhere that people aren't familiar with and then they become the star of the Olympics. It could have been Shikari Richardson, but she tested positive for pot. You've had names in the past. Did you know who Sean White was before he hit the skateboard? And the snowboard, the flying tomato. Do you know who Chloe Kim was before she hit the half pipe and everything else in the Winter Olympics? Caleb Tressel, six gold medals in the 2019 World Games. Sports Illustrated, go find the piece. A great piece on Caleb Tressel. That is the name to look out for. The swimmer who's being talked about as a freak in the Michael Phelps way. Maybe he could be an athlete in some other sport, but he decided to be a swimmer. There's a name to look out for. My best advice I can ever offer to some guy who's in a relationship right now who wants to enjoy sports, whether your wife, fiance, girlfriend is a super sports fan and she's always watching the games with you, whether she's a casual sports fan and maybe once in a while you can get her invested in a team or a player, or this is the only time she's into it. Watch it with her. Invest. Let her tell you what's going on. Just say you know Caleb Tressel and let her tell you about all the drama that's going on in the Olympics. Olympics. Huge. Fans. Women. And for you single guys, head out to a bar that's playing the Olympics and let her tell you all about it. There you go. Dating advice from guys. Will it work? I say yes. Keep me posted on social media. One thing I would not advise is to talk about professional wrestling with them. That fiance, girlfriend, wife. We are... In July of 2021, entering the next golden age of professional wrestling. If you are my age, early 30s, and you remember the 1990s, the Monday Night Wars, the NWO, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, the pandemic was awful for professional wrestling. You can act like it wasn't. You can make excuses. You can be the most diehard. It was the lowest point in pro wrestling history. No fans, no reaction, no reason to watch night in and night out. And all of a sudden, the fans come back, and you get John Cena, who's a household name, to come back for the first time in two years. You've got a cash-in on the WWE side. Oh, and you thought that was going to be good enough just for the WWE putting on their best pay-per-view in a year and a half and the money in the bank this past Sunday. No, no, no. AEW, All Elite Wrestling, according to reports from Fightful, have signed Daniel Bryan, a.k.a. Bryan Danielson from the Yes Movement, who's allegedly going to debut in September at Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York City. Fightful also reporting that AEW is interested in CM Punk. Punk hasn't been seen in professional wrestling in close to seven years, one of the most polarizing and popular wrestlers of all time. Daniel Bryan has not appeared on WWE programming since losing at WrestleMania. This seems likely. The CM Punk one seems more unlikely. Oh, by the way, Nick Gage, who if you don't know who that is, he's the most hardcore wrestler of all time. Yeah, even more hardcore than guys like Mick Foley, Tommy Dreamer, Terry Funk, and more. A guy who wrestles in death matches is now in AEW. 
The war is on. AEW and the WWE can act like it's not a war. It's not the 1990s again. This is the new glory years of professional wrestling. If you've been out, DVR it. Watch it when you can. I'm telling you, you're going to be blown away by the men and the women constantly. We are on the verge of the next glory era of wrestling. One more plug for these guys. White Heat, Brian Katie, JJ, right here on Godzilla Media. Make sure you're listening to this week's episode. These guys are loaded with content this week. But for me, I cannot wait to see what these companies are going to do to compete with one another. And that's it. This week's edition, Gaz on the go, all the sports talk you need in 30 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you at the hideaway this Friday. Make sure to leave a comment, review, subscribe, download, tell your friends, tell your family members, and more about Gaz Media. Talk to you next week.